Good morning, my fellow scientists. It is Tuesday, April 4th, 2017, and I want to talk to you about iron batteries. Now, yesterday, I talked about lithium-ion batteries and how they work and how they could be improved. You can improve the anode, the cathode, or the separator, and by tweaking those, which is fairly difficult and requires fancy equipment and a lot of knowledge, you can make a battery that's higher performance and a little bit cheaper per kilowatt hour. But the fact is that if you made a huge battery out of the world's production of lithium for a year, it would store a fraction of a percent of a week's worth of electricity for the United States. Even the biggest lithium battery we could hope to produce really can't dent the sort of grid capacity that we would like to have for central storage of electricity. So what could possibly make a dent in that? Well, that's iron. So if you took the production of iron, you could store the entire production of electricity in the United States for a week with a year's worth of iron. Now one would hope that's never necessary. We'd never want to actually store a week's worth of electricity. Even being able to store 12 hours worth of electricity would be amazing. But the point is that we produce enough iron to store the kind of energy we're, we'd like to store and we don't produce nearly enough lithium. And I don't think there's any hope that we could produce enough lithium to store the grid worth of electricity. Iron's also amazingly cheap compared to lithium. So there are some reasons to think about using an iron battery. So how would an iron battery work? Let's go to the chalkboard. Iron can exist in two different states. You can have iron three and you can have iron 2. So these are different redox states that have different amount of charge per iron atom. And if you're going to make a battery, you're going to want to separate a membrane to keep the two solutions from mixing. And if you have the same solution on both sides of your separator and you connect those with a wire, you get no voltage at all because the two solutions are equal. So there's no reason for the solutions to try to balance them by driving an electric current. But what you can do is you can charge this system just by adding some current and driving electrons from one side of the membrane to the other. Now if you push electrons this way, you make iron 2 plus on one side by reducing it, and you make iron 3 plus on the other by oxidizing it. And now you do have a battery. You have a difference in charge state on the two sides, and that's going to drive about 0.7 volts depending on the concentration. So at this point, we have a charged system. Why do we need this separator? Well, because we do not want this Fe2 and the Fe3 to mix. When you allow voltage to flow in the other direction, why then you start to generate Fe3, a small amount on one side and Fe2 on the other. That's the discharge cycle. You're starting to equalize those concentrations. This is sometimes called a concentration cell. So what does that look like in practice? Well, I folded up a piece of filter paper and put it in a tube to act as a salt bridge. And then I dispensed some ferrous ammonium sulfate and some ferric ammonium citrate to act as my iron source. I put the ammonium sulfate in the left and the ferric ammonium citrate on the right. And I'm going to dip my salt bridge in there. And immediately it rises to about 300 millivolts and then declines over the course of a second or two to about 30 millivolts. So this is a terrible design, but as a first approximation, you can see that you can get a little bit of voltage out of an iron battery. But getting voltage out of a battery is not the same thing as getting energy out of a battery. It can supply voltage even if the energy quantity is just ridiculously small. So we're not there yet, but it proves the principle that you can see that the difference in concentration and oxidation state gives us a voltage. We'll try to improve that battery by improving all three sides. We need to improve the anode, the cathode, and the separator. The anode and cathode need to be improved by adding lots more conductivity and surface area, and the separator by reducing its resistance from a folded piece of paper saturated in iron salt to a membrane separator such as a conductive polymer. So tune in tomorrow, we'll try to get there. Maybe I'll show another little project I've been working on and building a little mini computer out of a Raspberry Pi.